Hi everyone, I hope everyone had a great weekend. And the other day I posted some tips on how to take pictures of fireworks. And basically what I recommended was to do it in two steps. Get there a little early and take a picture during blue hour of the landscape of where the fireworks show will be. Uh, just do a normal exposure. And then when the fireworks show started, you know, go into manual mode, use a remote shutter or intervalometer. But the settings I recommended were like ISO 100, F11, for three seconds. And uh, that's pretty good exposure for most fireworks displays. Of course, you know, you might have to adjust that depending. In any case, um, I posted some images of my fireworks show that I had here locally, and I got a lot of great uh, feedback on that. I really appreciate it. But uh, I also asked if you wanted me to do a tutorial on how I process my fireworks images to get the kind of shots that I did. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's get started. All right, so I'll be using Lightroom and Photoshop to do these edits. And these are the unedited raw images that I've imported into Lightroom. And before I take them into Photoshop, I'm just gonna do a couple of quick edits to clean them up a little, and then we'll uh, open them into Photoshop. All right, so this is the landscape and blue hour shot. And I'm just going to just click on auto here. And then I'm gonna adjust the white balance to about right here where these uh, water sprouts are. And, uh, Let's just push your shadows up a little more and pull the highlights in some more. And we're done. Okay, let's uh, do the firework shot. And I'll do the same thing. I'll click on auto. And I'm not going to do any white balance here. Let's uh, push the shadows all the way up so we can see all of the, um, the clouds and smoke and everything in there. Get it nice and bright without blowing out the highlights. And I think there's still plenty there. And we'll just add a little bit of the haze to clear up the, uh, the smoke from the fireworks. And look how it brings in the color of the smoke too, which is really nice. And that's it. All right, let's, um, let's go here. And I'm gonna select both these images like so, and then just click right click on my mouse and then do edit and open as layers in Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, we have both images as you can see here. This is the landscape shot, this is the firework shot, and the landscape shot is on top, so that's why we only see that right now. But underneath is the firework shot, and I can turn off the landscape shot, and you can see the firework shot underneath. So all we need to do, actually, we need to work with the landscape shot. and. Uh, I'm going to reduce the opacity down to about, oh, let's say 35%. So now basically I can see the firework shot underneath. Uh, and what this is gonna do is allow me to help align the two images together. Because when I was in the field, I made the mistake of moving my tripod and camera to a different spot before the firework show started. So the images do not line up exactly. That's why in my tips, I recommended that you don't move your camera and tripod once you set up from the blue hour shot to the firework shot. But I didn't move too much, so for, fortunately I can align these up uh, pretty easily. But if we look closely, you can see right here, you can see some, uh, what are these, the water sprouts uh, spraying out are not lined up. And I'm gonna use this moving tool here to grab the landscape shot and just line it up the best I can, like so. Now it's still not perfectly lined up because if you look here, I have two water sprouts when there should be one and then these two are not lined up quite properly. And I wanna line these up and I'm just gonna do very simply with a smudge tool. And all this is not really necessary if you, you didn't move your tripod, but I'm just gonna line that one up like that and line that one up like that. So again, uh, let me just note that I am selected. I have selected the landscape shot here, so that's the only thing I'm changing. I'm not changing anything in the firework shot. Now, let me go ahead and turn the opacity back up to 100%, and let me zoom back out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a layer mask. And a mask is basically something you can put over the top of the image. In this case, I'm gonna do the landscape image, and we can shade out areas that we don't want to show. 
So in this scene, I don't want to see the clouds in the bright sky. I want to see the fireworks in the sky. But at the bottom, I do want to see the landscape. So I'm going to add a mask that gradually uh, erases the sky, but keeps the landscape. And I can do that with a, a gradient. But first, let's, ask, let's add the layer mask. So to create a layer mask is very easy. I just make sure that I select the landscape because that's where I want to put the mask. And I just select the add layer mask button here, which is a little box with a circle on it. And now it's added this layer mask. As you can see, it's a white box. So right now the mask is completely white, meaning that it's only going to show what's on top. And when you're working with a mask, you're only working primarily in two colors, black and white, then the shades in between. So when it's completely white, it's just going to show what's on the top layer, in this case, the landscape. And anything in black is going to show what's underneath, in this case, the fireworks, completely. But if it's a shade of gray, it's going to kind of blend those two things together. And what I want to do is go completely black at the top, then gradually go to completely white at the bottom. So I'm going to use the gradient tool to create that. And then... Down here behind me is the color of the gr gradients that we can use, or the color of the brushes that we can use for the layer mask, which again is just black and white. And if it's not black or white now, just click on this little part right here, and that'll reset it to completely black and white. So let's go ahead and select the gradient tool right here. And I wanna make sure that I have a basic gradient set here. So I'm just going to click on that. It's underneath inside here. So just click on that and click here and we're done. And then also I want to make sure I select a linear gradient uh, right there, not any of these other ones. And then now that I have the gradient tool, all I have to do is right or left click on my mouse and drag up from the bottom and go to the top. So now you can see uh, if you look at the layer mask, it goes from completely black, shades of gray, then to completely white. So that's allowing all of the fireworks to show, then it slowly, gradually blends in the landscape. Now, I'm not done yet because what I want to do is I'm going to use my brush tool. And I want to make sure that I have a black brush selected. So I'm going to swap it here, right here behind me, so that I have a black brush. And then I'm going to adjust my brush size, like so. Uh, and, and you can do it with your keyboard controls. I'm just doing Alt and right click to adjust my uh, brush and feathering. Or you can do it manually here, but I'm just going to do it uh, with the keyboard shortcuts. Now the next thing I want to do is change the flow of my brush from 100% down to about 9 or 10 percent. Let's do 9 percent. So basically when I change the flow to 9 percent and I have a black brush as indicated here behind me, I'm only do using 9 percent black. So anything I brush in is going to be very gradual, but the more I brush over the same spot, the darker it's going to get. So I'm painting more and more black as I go over. And what I want to do is just go into the water because I want to show the reflection of the fireworks in the water and I can just do it gradually like so and the more I go over it the more the fireworks layer is going to show so now it's looking just a little more natural I think now what I want to do now is I'm going to I'm going to brush in the fireworks to make sure they're a little more crisp like so and then I'm going to increase my brush size and just just do a quick a quick uh, swipe like that all right now I'm going to change to a white brush and I can do that by just clicking on this arrow here and I'm still at nine percent flow and let me make my brush smaller And then I'm just going to brush in over the trees to make the tree line just a little bit brighter in the image. Like so. And make the brush a little smaller so I can get over here.
and that's it so basically i'm all done <clears throat> now i'm going to close and save this and this will take us right back to lightroom so i'm going to click here to close and say yes okay so it took us back to lightroom and now this is our edited photoshop image so i'm going to double click on that and I need to crop out this huge misalignment over here. So I'm just going to develop, select my crop tool, and I'm going to select the four by three aspect ratio. And then just crop in a little tighter. Take out the grass in the bottom. Maybe move it over slightly. Now, Basically, we're done. If I want to do any more editing, like let me just click auto again and see what happens. A little more punch, maybe a tiny bit more dehaze. Pull the blacks in so it's a little bit darker without affecting the uh, fireworks themselves. And colors are a little bit too strong in, to my eye, so I'm going to pull this back a little bit on the vibrance. And what I might do, let's click the brush tool. And uh, let's just make these water spots a little bit brighter. Like so. So that was a pretty simple edit and in real life I'd have probably done that in a couple of minutes and if I had moved my dang tripod during the shoot I'd have done it even faster but uh you know let me know in the comments below if you like these kind of tutorials uh because this was a viewer request tutorial on Photoshop which I don't normally do but I'm happy to if uh, there's a demand for it so let me know uh hit the like button subscribe and if you can maybe buy me a coffee or two because it makes making these videos a lot easier thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon